Yeah, thank you very much for the kind um, introduction and uh, thanks for having me here. It's, it's really exciting to be here today and to talk about um, a topic which um, fascinates me since a long time, um, about the gut microbiome and its impact on brain aging. And I hope I can, at the end of my talk, uh, can convince you that the gut microbiota are a key way for improving brain health in aging. So all of us are aging, and this um, happens at different speeds. So we heard already in the morning about this. Chronological age can be different from biological age. There's many factors occurring during aging. Um, um, these hallmarks have been recently updated in this uh, review and um, highlighting different aspects such as mitochondrial dysfunctions, telomere attri attrition, and chronic inflammation. And in the next minutes, I want to take a closer look on on a new um, aspect which is emerging in aging research, um, the microbiota. We are now realizing that um, the uh, microorganisms, our intestine, play a key role in host aging. And we heard already from Jan about uh, the trajectory um, of changes um, during aging in the microbiota, and they can be, uh, um, go in different directions depending on different factors, environmental factors, genetic factors, lifestyle, um, going into more prolongevity aspects or more into a direction of um, age-related de decline. And uh, there it can happen uh, situations such as an imbalance in the microbiome ecosystem, what we call a dysbiosis, uh, which is characterized by a, a decrease in the um, ecological diversity, uh, a decrease in beneficial microbes, an increase in pathobionts and has been associated with different aspects of pathologies, age-related, uh, such as um, in terms of metabolic health, obesity, diabetes, um, cancer, um, also cardiovascular health, as well as impacting brain health. So when we talk about the microbiota, um, we should not forget that, um, and this is already what Jan alluded to, um, that this is an entire ecosystem. There are not only bacteria in there, there are also archaea, viruses, phages, fungi. And when we talk about microbiota, it's important to remember that more than 50% of us are microbiota. And um, this is even more apparent on the genetic level, that where it has been shown that 500 times there are more microbial uh, genes, microbial origin, than human origin. And this really suggests that there is here an evolved symbiosis between the microorganisms in our gut and the organism, the host, apparent for both for humans and for pets. So the microbiota are a companion throughout our lifetime, um, and this is really an, a conserved pattern across mammalian species. It not only happens in humans, that is also what we observe in cats and dogs. There are many factors which can influence this trajectory. Um, while every one of us has a unique microbiome, it's unique as our fingerprint, um, this uh, trajectory changes over the um, life course. It's very plastic um, in the first days of life, in the first weeks. Uh, there are many factors which can influence it. That already starts prenatally. Um, the, um, the, mater uh, the mom has a big impact, maternal infection, then going over to a delivery mode, um, C-section versus vaginal birth, the feeding type, breast milk versus formula fed, antibiotic exposure, gestational age. Moving over to the transitional phase, uh, the weaning period, we heard already from Jan about the move over to solid food, um, introduction of enzymes, change in pH. And here I want to also highlight um, a recent study from my colleagues at Nestle Research from Lea Siegwald and Olga Sakwinska in collaboration with the Broad Institute identified a new strain uh, which could be uh, um, playing a crucial um, element in the weaning period. Um, and this was recently published in 22 in Cell. Moving then over to a more stable phase during um, adulthood and then going over into aging where it again gets fairly plastic. So the gut microbiome is a modulator of healthy aging. With chronological age, there are changes in the microbiota host dialogue, and this can lead to different speeds in decline in physical decline 
as well as mental decline and can be affected by environmental and lifestyle factors leading to either accelerated aging, unhealthy aging, or deaccelerated aging, healthy aging. And I want to highlight uh, this review here, which was last year published by Tarini Ghosh um, and colleagues from the APC. Um, they uh, looked, um, they did a meta-analysis of a microbiota pattern in, in aging um, across um, existing human studies. And they um, did two analysis. One time they looked on um, the general pattern um, across um, the age landscape. And then the other point, they compared uh, apparently healthy versus unhealthy subjects. And what they identified is they identified three groups. Group one, what they called, decreases with age and um, has been related to healthy aging. Um, there's uh, a couple of taxa in there which um, has been shown to produce uh, short-chain fatty acids, fruiterate, for instance, such as Fecalibacterium, Rosibuia, and Coprococcus. There's a second group which increases with age and has been associated with unhealthy aging. And there's a third group which also increases with age but has, um, is depleted in unhealthy aging, and we see these taxa uh, mostly in uh, populations of centenarians. The topic of my talk today is how the gut and the brain communicates. And this concept is what we call the microbiota gut brain axis. It's a bi directional communication. So the gut communicates with the brain, and the brain communicates with the gut. In the latter case, that could be related to chronic stress, for instance, and um, can affect the composition of the microbiota, the function, as well as well as can also infect uh, gut physiology, leading to um, changes in motility, for instance. There are in total, there are in total six um, pathways, um, which um, builds and are part of these microbiota gut brain access communication. And these pathways, most importantly, they should be not um, looked at isolated, but they are also intercorrelative. They are affecting each other. First, I want to highlight the neural pathway, the um, enteric nervous system linking to the vagus nerve and then to the spinal cord. It has been shown that uh, the integrity of the vagus nerve is important for emotional regulation, but also uh, more importantly for our topic today in aging, um, it has been shown that um, the vagus nerve may play a role in the progression of Parkinson's disease. As well, in preclinic um, assessments, it has been shown that um, the vagal integrity is key for cognitive um, performances. The second one is microbial metabolites. Um, here, I want to point out um, probably the most studied uh, metabolites, uh, short-chain fatty acids. The third one is the breakdown of existing metabolites. Um, for instance, in relation to tryptophan, what Jan already pointed out, um, their conversion to indoles, which can have um, various impact on the, on the host through binding, for instance, to the um, a real hydrocarbon receptor. Uh, the gut microbiota also produce neurotransmitters, such as uh, GABA and glutamate, which play a key role in neural systems in the enteric and the central nervous system as well as serotonin, uh, which is um, important for mental health, but also for cognitive processes, and is um, mostly located in the, in the gut, up to 90%. There it plays a role in motility. There's also a crosstalk with the immune system. The gut microbiota can regulate the immune system, and the uh, immune system can impact and regulate the microbiota. I want to highlight in this regard uh, cells, immune cells, which are trafficking uh, between different tissues, um, such as monocytes. Uh, there is uh, increasing evidence that microbial metabolites can modulate the phenotype of these trafficking immune cells. And that's important um, to highlight for aging because they would um, actually traffic to tissues that are inflamed and so then can push further immune reactions in these tissues. There's also gut hormonal signaling, um, such as, for instance, Quellen for satiety, GLP-1, um, also neuropeptides. And there's a sixth pathway, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, or stress axis, which can also bidirectionally um, act. 
It's important to note uh, that this anatomy is conserved across animal species, including humans, um, dogs, and cats. So as I pointed out already, there are many factors which can modulate the gut microbiota and thus the signaling to the brain. That includes motive delivery, exercise, inflammation, psychological stress, early life trauma, host genetics, environmental factors, and aging. With being diet, um, a major factor where we can relatively easy, non-invasively modulate gut and brain health across the lifespan via the gut-brain axis. And here I want to highlight a human study recently published from the Knights Lab showing that it can uh, account for up to 44% of the total variation in average uh, microbiome composition. And so really highlighting that diet is a major tool in modulating this communication. And in my talk today, I want to um, focus on this relationship between diet and aging and how it impacts the brain through the gut brain axis. We heard already uh, this morning that there are um, shared similarities between um, humans and, and pets in terms of physiological and pathophysiological processes. I also want to highlight this uh, study looking on the um, gut microbiome and found that actually uh, the dog and the human gut microbiome are quite similar in gene content. This is a study of, um, which was uh, performed um, by my colleagues at Nestle Research and Purina. And more importantly, they also looked in how actually uh, this ecosystem responds to diet. And uh, here they, um, the researchers employed two diets, um, a high protein, low carb, and a low protein, a high carb diet. And they found actually that the response to diet was quite uh, similar um, in, in, in dogs uh, which were um, in agreement with uh, studies um, in, in humans. When we talk about uh, brain health and aging and the gut microbiome, uh, we also have to highlight Ellie Metchnikov. Ellie Metchnikov um, got in 1908 uh, the Nobel Prize for his discoveries in innate immunity. And he was fascinated uh, by the fact that in the Balkan area there are there were many people living uh, which had a higher life expectancy, they lived longer than in other parts of Europe at this time in, in 1900. And they also um, consumed more fermented foods than in other areas of Europe. And while probiotics or like the beneficial effect of bacteria was not yet really a topic in research, he postulated with his provocative hypothesis that factors in fermented food may have a beneficial impact on host health in aging, maybe slowing down deterioration of cognitive decline. And he highlighted this in his book, The Prolongation of Life, Optimistic Studies. And in fact, in fermented food, we find a lot of different factors. We find uh, li living bacteria. We have the metabolites of these bacteria, as well as uh, fiber, which can all, which we know can impact the gut microbiome. From our colleagues at the APC, uh, we know that the gut microbiota composition can correlate with health aspects in elderly. I want to highlight here the ELDOMED study, which is probably one of the biggest studies looking into, um, they looked into about 200 elderly individuals. And they found actually that um, the, uh, di the more diverse their gut microbiota was, the uh, better health outcomes they had. They had a better cognition, they had better immune function, um, they had a decrease um, <clears throat> in, in inflammatory markers as well. They were interested what could possibly drive this um, diversity in the microbiome, and they looked into what they were eating, and they found that um, in those who had a more diverse microbiome, they had a more diverse diet. Of course, this is an association study, but uh, were like first steps into um, going in this direction of um, the importance of diet for a healthy life. I also want to highlight uh, this study. Um, we know that Mediterranean diet is good for host health. There are many factors in the Mediterranean diet, such as omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, fibrous polyphenols with the antioxidative properties um, that we know from preclinical mechanistic studies that they can have a beneficial impact. 
And um, I want to highlight this uh, study particularly because it went a bit deeper into the impact of host health and how it relates to the gut microbiome. This was part of the New Age uh, project. Um, again, a paper from Tarini Gosch and colleagues from the APC. And they found that uh, gut bacteria taxa, which were enriched um, due to adherence to the Mediterranean diet, that they were um, um, associated with um, better cognitive function, with lower frailty, and with uh, negatively associated with inflammatory markers such as CRP. They went a step further. They also looked because compositional changes, this is um, interesting, but it's really uh, matters also how does it impact the function. And they found that um, by looking, by doing some inferred analysis, they found that it also impacted their metabolic output um, in, in finding changes in short chain fatty acids as well as secondary bile acids. They also did some ecosystem analysis and found that these taxa that were enriched following the adherence to the Mediterranean diet, that these taxa was more a keystone um, um, in the ecosystem uh, rather than the ones which were um, in, the, in the negative group, they were uh, more in the periphery. And I just wanted to highlight this because the ecosystem is very important um, for interventional effects. Um, does actually um, a probiotic, for instance, colonize? How does it actually, uh, how it can actually um, engraft in, in this existing ecosystem? So it's very important to take these factors into account. I also want to highlight this study, uh, which looked on um, patterns in the microbiome and their potential predictive value. And this was um, from the ISB in Seattle, Tomasz Schwermanski and Sean Gibbons. And what they found is um, they had access to two um, human cohorts, and they found that uh, from mid to late adulthood that um, there are specific patterns in the microbiome related to an increased uniqueness um, in healthy subjects, which was less absent, this drift, in less healthy subjects. And this increase in uniqueness correlated with uh, different metabolites, um, which Jan already pointed out. Um, they come up very often every now, now <laughs> even more, more and more. And there are indoles, and um, also I want to highlight here precursor. Uh, moreover, they also did find that there was um, um, <clears throat> a depletion of the core genera, Bacteroides. While retaining a higher dominance of Bacteroides and also um, a higher uniqueness in the microbiota, they actually showed with this population um, that in a four years follow up study, they had a, a decreased mortality risk. Um, and it would be interesting to see, considering that the dog microbiome and the human microbiome show actually similarities, um, to see also whether we can also have these predictive uh, patterns we can identify in, in dogs and cats um, yeah, using um, dog aging approaching, for instance. Um, so, so we know that um, the gut microbiome composition changes in aging. And um, I want to highlight this study briefly here on longevity. This is a study which um, Elena Biacci and colleagues looked into um, in a cohort of centenarians mm -hmm. here in Italy. And they uh, postulated um, that there is a decrease in the core microbiota with aging, while in 65 plus there is actually an acquisition of a subdominant fraction, which consists into um, um, those subjects which um, um, show um, longevity and has been associated with some health associated taxas such as Acomantia and Fecalibacterium prosnitsi. So that the gut microbiota plays a role in longevity, a causal role in longevity, we know uh, since this study, published in 2017, um, they looked into a killifish. Killifish is a great model to study aging due to its uh, short lifespan. An old killifish is about four months old. And um, they um, used fecal microbiota transplants. So they were wondering, can we actually, when we transfer microbiota from a young host into an aged host, can we reverse some aspects um, of aging? Can we maybe increase uh, their lifespan? And uh, remarkably, uh, um, they found they can increase the lifespan in these um, killifish. And while this is great, um, it's of course also important, and what we heard already this morning, um, that also health span, does it impact health span? And they can, in, indeed, they did, she, they did show that um, it has a positively impact on health span uh, by uh, positively modulating this age-related decline in motor behavior. 
Another study added to this uh, knowledge, uh, looking into a progeria mouse model, in a mouse model of the mouse model of um, accelerated aging. And here um, they used uh, microbiota they took from actually healthy mice and uh, transferred those in the progeria mice and could actually show that it um, positively impacted their lifespan and more also their health span. And they did also some metabolomic analysis uh, where they identified um, a profile of um, changes in secondary bile acids which were depleted in aging and then were restored. And it's really important, um, these findings, also related to what Jan already showed in the centenarians, um, pointed out this secondary bile acid, uh, which has been actually shown to um, increase T-regulator results and also has an impact on mitochondrial activity. And uh, these secondary bile acids, they can actually affect um, effects on the host in, through multiple receptors, and that makes them really interesting. And there's also some studies now showing that Alzheimer's disease um, patients, they actually have a different uh, profile in secondary bile acids, not only systemically, but also in the brain. So um, the gut microbiota can affect multiple aspects of aging. Um, so this has been shown across multiple preclinical studies. Um, it started from showing that by uh, transferring microbiota from an aged host into a young host, they could actually show that it has a cause a role in inflammation. It also affects intestinal permeability. It can lead to a breakdown of the um, um, intestinal barrier, which can then lead to systemic inflammation and macrophage dysfunction. It can also asp um, impact aspects of metabolic health, such as insulin resistance. It can affect uh, stem cells in the gut, as well as in, in the brain, and which is related to, uh, for instance, processes such as um, the birth of new neurons, neurogenesis, which play a role in cognition. So while we know that moving um, microbiota from an aged and young host that can actually impact, can actually trigger signs of uh, brain aging, the question appears, what happens when we do the opposite? Can we reverse brain aging through transferring microbiota from a young host into an aged host? And this is um, a study I want to highlight here from my postdoc, where we uh, used um, microbiota, transferred them from a young host into an aged host, and could actually show that it can counteract selective aspects of brain aging. And this is, um, we published this two years ago in Nature Aging. Interestingly, we did find only marginal effects on gut microbiota composition. But we did see some effects on predicted functions related to short chain fatty acids degradation and synthesis. We moreover were interested in how this impacts the immune system. So we took a um, specific look on this pathway. And we found that um, it can affect actually early effector cells in the immune system. And this pattern also transferred to the immune cells in the brain, the microglia. We did see here changes in inflammatory patterns, as well as also changes on the um, transcriptomic level, looking on um, so-called microglia sensome, which is important uh, factors uh, playing a role in synaptic plasticity as well as in cognitive processes. We were also interested whether it changes the metabolome in a specific area in the brain, um, which is related to um, um, cognition, which is crucial for cognition, for learning and memory. We looked here on the hippocampus and we could actually found that uh, more than 30 metabolites that were decreased with age could be restored uh, through the FMT, um, including neurotransmitters such as GABA, as well as uh, some interesting metabolites uh, such as n glycolyl neuraminide. We were interested in whether these changes in the immune system in, in the metabolome in the hippocampus also affects um, behavior. And here we did a classical um, cognitive test, the morris water maze, where we did find that the age-related decline in learning was actually counteracted through the FMT from the young mice um, into the aged mice. And we also did see an anxiolytic effect. Now is the question, what is driving these factors? FMT has an impact, but what are the drivers? Are there these bacteria, are there metabolites? Are there maybe other factors even? This paper came just out a few months after um, from Omar and, and colleagues, and they uh, identified a specific metabolite, Delta Valero Betain, which they found increased in the brains of aged mice and in those young mice which received FMT 
from an aged mouse. So they were wondering whether this delta valor rupetein also plays a role in neuronal functions and cognitive processes. And they supplemented um, these young mice um, with delta valer rupetein. They did some um, other classical cognitive tests, such as the novel object recognition test. And what they found was the young mice, which actually received delta valer rupetein, um, showed the same patterns than an aged mouse uh, with its co cognitive decline. Why I want to highlight this specifically, this delta valer rupetein, um, it's um, actually a, um, a factor possibly also in aging. In human aging, um, it's increased uh, systemic concentration with advanced human age. This is data from the UK Biobank. And also, it has been related to um, being an obesogenic factor. It's, it's a precursor for TMAO, so it probably has also a role in cardiovascular health. And um, is there also relevance for pets? Um, it could be. Uh, so it has been found in the saliva of dogs, as well as in dog food. Um, so it could be an interesting factor here to look into the relationship between alterations in metabolic health and, and brain health. I also want to highlight another metabolite acetate, which is derived as a, the major short chain fatty acid from the fermentation of fibers. And um, this is, um, this is work from uh, Marco Prince lab, um, which actually in 2015 had a landmark paper showing that short chain fatty acids can regulate um, the immune cells in the brain, which are really crucial for cognitive processes and their maturation and uh, function. At that time, it was not clear what are the factors in the short chain fatty acids driving these changes, as well as microglia don't have receptors for short chain fatty acids. So it must be another factor. In this paper, they clarified that the first point. They identified that possibly acetate is here the driving factor, modulating um, metabolic fitness in the in brain immune cells, as well as the innate immune cell um, system in the brain in, in normal mice, as well as in a mouse model of Alzheimer's disease. But what happens in humans? So here we are starting from an observational study. This is a small study in a Japanese population, and they looked into a healthy adults, into adults with mild cognitive decline and with Alzheimer's disease. And what they actually found was um, a specific um, genus, Fecalibacterium prosnitzi, which was related, correlating with the cognitive score in these subjects. Um, they also went a step further and looked into um, whether um, because it's um, a genus consists of many different species and many different strains. And uh, strains and species, they can have um, different effects. So it's really, uh, it um, it's, can be very strain-specific effects. And they actually also uh, show this here, uh, showing that um, there are some um, strains uh, related to the genus of Fecalibacterium prosnitzi, which showed effects, um, actually showing uh, beneficial effects in this Alzheimer mouse model as opposed to others. Um, why is Fecalibacterium prosnitzi perhaps interesting? It has anti-inflammatory pro properties. It has been shown to be a proteoid producer, and Jan has shown a few years ago that it's also a low abundant in dogs with IBD. Similar to human aging, there's also neurodegenerative diseases, um, neurodegenerative processes occurring in, in dogs as well as cognitive dysfunction. There's an increased prevalence with age, and it's, it's very interesting uh, considering um, that neurodegenerative processes are also quite uh, similar in dogs. So um, that um, also highlights considering also the aspect of um, a similar gut microbiome, um, that um, potential intervention strategies which are effective in humans, that these findings could possibly also translate it into um, pets um, considering these factors. And I want to show uh, at, as an exemplary um, this on the next slide. And maybe also um, and another point is actually um, there's only limited, um, what Jan already pointed out, there's only limited um, evidence so far on gut microbiota and brain aging in pets. But initial results in a pilot dog trial actually suggest there's an association between gut microbiota compositional changes, specifically actinobacteria in this case, and memory performance. And considering the factors with the gut microbiome similarities, that really gives the potential to yield valuable insights uh, um, deducted from human studies to also possibly health um, in pets. And I want to show this as an exemplary study 
Um, okay, first I want to highlight actually this study also um, with um, B. Previs strain, which actually uh, um, showed this um, impact in elderly is probably the most studied one, and that um, showed like impact, positive impact on cognition. Not only a total cognitive score, but also on different levels, such as inmate memory, misospatial, and delayed memory. And, um, and yet, there's no uh, studies uh, which actually investigated um, probiotics. There are some studies with prebiotics in, in um, elderly um, in aged uh, pets, uh, which show beneficial effects on host health. Um, it would be um, um, very interesting to see whether also the yeah, probiotic strain should could positively impact uh, brain health in pets in aging. I want to highlight uh, this study as an exemplary um, for um, how we can translate possibly findings from humans to pets. And these are studies which were conducted um, in collaboration with my colleagues from Nestle Research and from Purina. And they actually showed converging evidence um, by using a belongum strain um, across different species from humans to pets, improving mental well-being and factors uh, related to stress. So the first study I want to highlight here is a study in dogs um, showing that there's a decrease in anxiety behavior and stress response in these Labrador retrievers. We moreover then uh, looked whether also we can find similar findings in humans. And here we um, looked first in subjects with IBS, which showed improved depressive symptoms and decreased response to fearful stimuli in a brain region um, which are um, implicated for emotional regulation, um, the amygdala. And there's now a current confirmatory study currently running. Moreover, we also found um, positive um, eff effects in, um, in a study in healthy adults, which were um, exposed to mild to moderate stress, showing um, a reduction in the perception of stress in these subjects. And it's right remarkable effect for the small population. And this um, sh um, wants to show you an example um, where we can actually uh, um, translate findings from dogs to humans and vice versa, showing converging evidence. So in the, in the ecosystem in the gut, there are not only bacteria, but there are also other factors, such as bacteriophages. And um, bacteriophages are um, this is a study showing, um, observational study showing that the abundance of um, this bacteriophages, caudoviralis, were associated with improved executive function and memory in humans. And um, then um, this group looked um, moreover mechanistically in moving, um, in transferring FMT enriched in this caudoviralis bacteriophages into mouse and Drosophila, and actually could resemble. Um, or actually could prove the hypothesis that they maybe have an impact on, on memory. And um, while this is a completely unexplored field so far, um, it is plausible that effects of probiotics could be um, influenced by bacteriophages or um, partially mediated. And it uh, would be exciting to see um, what uh, the future will bring in this, in this space. So what we learned today is there's a bidirectional communication between the gut and the brain. In health, it looks um, it's um, very much in balance, everything, the microbiome, and um, there's um, co proper cognitive function. There's no inflammation, hippocampal neurogenesis. However, in aging, um, we uh, see a dysbiosis in the microbiota ecosystem, and this can affect different aspects. Uh, it can affect uh, GI physiology, it can lead to a um, decrease in the uh, um, integrity of the intestinal barrier, can lead to a translocation of pathobions, translocation of pro-inflammatory mediators in the systemic circulation. Then um, this can disrupt immune cell function, can lead to immune activation, and finally can also affect the brain, leading to cognitive decline, to increased inflammation, impaired blood brain um, barrier. So you learned today that there's uh, a lot of uh, changes occurring in the GI tract, um, and this can affect the brain, but it can also affect many other organs, and it would be um, uh, very interesting to see what the future will bring in targeted microbiota interventions to also improve health, which is related to the cardiovascular and the immune system. So in summary, the gut microbiota is altered in aging across species, and this can impact uh, health, including brain health. 
there's only a limited research um, to date on the relationship between the gut microbiome and the aging brain and brain function in companion animals. Cognitive performance declines with age in humans and in pets and can be influenced by diet. With diet, we have a toolbox where we non-invasively can modulate um, this communication and to improve um, health, um, including cognitive health. Understanding, increasing our understanding on ecological factors is really key to also um, design, um, to design uh, the, um, the right um, nutrition intervention, also considering indivi individualized responses um, are key going forward in designing um, efficient nutrition interventions. And technological advances, including next generation sequencing, metabolomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, also the use of artificial intelligence, will continue to allow for insights into the role of the microbiota gut-brain axis in healthy brain aging. And I hope I convinced you that the gut microbiota are a key factor in improving brain health in aging. And considering um, the similarities in the gut microbiota between uh, dogs and humans, as well as shared physiology um, patterns, um, they are really open up opportunities where we can uh, design microbiota targeted uh, solutions for humans and pets and can translate these findings and vice versa. So thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>